Bullied. At least one in four Australian kids is regularly bullied, sometimes with devastating consequences. They're the mums and dads of teenage kids who killed themselves after being bullied online. And the rise of social media makes the torment hard to escape. It made me so depressed. I received another message, kill myself. Most victims and their families have tried everything to stop the bullying. Continuing at school it is not going to be an option for him. But the problem grows day by day. There's a point where you just explode. In this program, we will make a stand. Our approach is controversial, but will only be conducted under tight supervision. We'll equip students who came to us for help with specially designed backpacks rigged with hidden cameras. Students brave enough to record their bullying as it happens. We'll then show that footage to the school principals and set up group sessions to confront this issue head on. I had no idea he was getting bullied that bad. This is not about blame. No one will be singled out. It's about working together to find solutions. It made me realise that it's like I'm not alone. To help those who find themselves bullied. Last time on Bullied, we met Kelsey, a 14-year-old boy bullied to the edge of despair. It's gone from just picking on his hair to picking on who he is to homophobic slurs to physical hitting. Everyone, thank you for joining us here today. A group session gave Kelsey's peers a voice that helped them find the resolution he so desperately needed. Probably the saddest thing I've ever seen, just seeing someone so tormented by people. I had no idea he was getting bullied that bad. Brings back bad memories. What about for you, Ray? Just... Going through this process with Kelsey was tough. But the frightening fact is there are thousands of other kids whose lives are being ruined by bullying, like Chloe. All the bullying started when I was first arrived at school. People come up and hit me and punch me and make and like push me down the stairs and nothing would happen. The teachers wouldn't believe me to the point where I cried myself to sleep. It's just because I'm worse that I would throw a paper towel over my stool in the bathroom. And like, no, 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 it wasn't me, it wasn't me. And then they got boys to help. And then just last week, a whole different group decided to throw coins at me. But the teachers don't even believe anything I say. I wrote so many reports and student incidents and everything that I can't take it there anymore. Hey, Dad, look at this. 16 year old Chloe lives in Roma, southwest Queensland, with two of her three siblings and parents, Joe and Grant. She has a syndrome called Hurler Shea. It affects fewer than one in 100,000 Australian kids. In Chloe, it forces her to walk on her tiptoes. It's a disorder that inhibits her movement. It makes joint stiffening, um, soft tissues become more firm. Chloe's had to go through quite a few operations to alleviate some of the pain untreated. Chloe would have been lucky to make it to 16. Chloe is treated at a local hospital every week and must travel 500 kilometres to Brisbane twice a year for essential treatment that aims to give her a normal life expectancy. There are only two high schools in town. Chloe's attended both. The family is running out of options as the physical threats Chloe experiences are now too dangerous to tolerate. She hasn't got the mobility in her hands to catch herself if she falls like we do. And when you hear kids trying to trip her, step on the back of her feet while coming downstairs onto a concrete walkway, the risk of more permanent injury is high with Chloe. Chloe has always lived life to the full, but bullying changes all that. 
It has gotten me to hate my life. I have been pushed to tears to, and it has been hard not to like cry when it's happening to me because then if I cry around those people they know it's actually hurting me and they just want to keep taking, like trying to bring me down. At this stage, the emotional toll has become too much for the whole family. Chloe's change. Chloe was someone who was just full of energy, super motivated, refuses to let a disability get in her way from being a normal child, normal teenager. It's gone. And it's just taking a toll on her. There's just no smile, there's no spark, nothing in there at the moment. Chloe said that she hated her life, that she wanted to die, and that was my turning point where I had to find some, some way to help her out. And every day we would send an email or we would ring from the school, and doing that seemed to make it worse. It was just really helpless. What we were doing was just not working anymore. Feeling they'd exhausted their options with the school, Chloe and her family contacted us. After extensive psychological assessment, we started working with her. Chloe is given a hidden camera in a pencil case to record her bullying at school. If she succeeds in capturing evidence of bullying, we'll take the footage to the school principal. Our ultimate goal is a group session with her fellow students to find a resolution. It's probably an act of desperation. There was not much else we could do. Chloe's very brave to put herself out there. Last resort. I didn't need any proof from Chloe to say that's happening. I think other people needed the proof. After years of bullying, this is a critical day for Chloe. The bullying has gotten me to hate my life. It has affected me to the point where I don't want to share my face around the playground, where I just want to eat my lunch in the bathroom, where no one can actually find me. Love you. Love you, darling. Have a good day. day. You too. The bullying is always happening when no one's around and there's no teachers or anything to prove that the bullying actually happened. Throughout the process, Chloe will be supported by a team of professionals. Our producer is also on hand to help. Is the lock button on? Yes. So I guess that's just a lesson, just double check. Yeah, like I did that before I went up to school. Yeah, well done. Maybe it's worth thinking about when you do put it back in. If anybody did open it, it's the least likely. Won't see everything. Yeah. Neither the students nor school authorities will be aware that Chloe is filming them. I think anyone can know what that is. Could be anything from inside, isn't it? For this process to work, it's important no one at school knows what Chloe is doing. If you get worried, if you want to call me or anything like that, you do so. Okay? Yep. I'm here. And even when I'm not physically here, I'm not here to be fine. Yeah, and you can away. Going into school with a hidden camera is a scary thing, but if this works, then I could have my life back to normal. You guys okay? Yeah. Are you feeling all right? Yeah, very upsetting. Come on, let's go inside. 
Unknown to Chloe, her camera failed before it was discovered. She still has no evidence of bullying. So how are you feeling, Chloe? I'm a little bit upset. Yeah, what's upsetting you the most? So I couldn't even last today. Oh. It's not about that, darling. It didn't really go the way we planned because I told five people and two of them I can trust really well, but I just found that quite sure now. And I walk in and he starts yelling at me like, why are you recording me? Um, and he ended up telling the whole class that I was recording him and he was like, I'll go, I'll put it into the cops. I'll try and make your mother lose her job. I, I'll do this, I'll do that. And it just made me so upset. Miss ended up finding out too. And she was like, I didn't give you my permission. Why are you even recording at school? And I was like, I have my reasons why. I eventually got told to head up to the office and she was like, what happened, what happened? And I was like, I'm not telling you until my sister gets here. And she's like, OK, well, I'm going to ring your parents about it. I was like, yep. I'm interstate when I receive news of what's happened. As soon as Chloe's parents have had the chance to explain the situation to the principal, I call them to discuss what they'd like to happen next. Hello. Hi, it's Ian Thorpe here. How's Chloe? Um, Chloe. Struggling with just the, the whole ordeal. Mm -hmm. I think she's lost in what's happening now. And fighting for answers herself. What exactly happened? One of the bullies found out and okay. it pretty much went south from there. And what was uh, Chloe's reaction when she came home? Fight. Yeah, she was pretty annoyed. What was that conversation like with the principal? We did have a pretty hostile reception this morning. Really? They were very distrusting, very pissed, as in the fact that, you know, a hidden camera had come into the premises. Their initial thing was, it's not on, we're going to sue. And they were very defensive in, you know, we work with the bullying. We know we always try and keep our eyes on what's happening. But haven't you, haven't you spoken to the school numerous times about this? Yes, yes. yes. She's been yeah. at the school two years. Um, I would probably say monthly. And for a while it was weekly and, and daily, but it's probably back to monthly now. I reassured them this isn't a blame game. It's not about what you're doing or not doing wrong. It's how we can actually make things better. And yeah, it's, there's still a fair bit of hostility towards the fact I think they think that um, we're targeting them more than the actual policy. That's not what our intention is either. We, do, in, no. in all of this, we don't want this to be about blaming. We actually want to create solutions for people. Yes, yes. yes. We're just worried now the repercussions are going to be. We were really concerned that we might have had some sort of lynch mob turn up at our door. Is Chloe there, by the way? Say hello. Hello. Hi, Chloe. We really want to try and help resolve this for you um, with your family and hopefully we can get a result. If this all works out well, I can hopefully go back to school with no more bullying and just have like my old life back. Chloe, you've, you've been incredibly brave and I think, you know, you should keep that courage to be able to, to stick it out. So be proud of yourself. Don't forget we're in this together and I'll speak to you soon. Thanks, Thanks Ian. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. I actually feel a little bit sick. Um, I feel upset uh, and it's horrible knowing that someone is going through this. Um, that someone who was already up against so much is being bullied in such a way. Um, but, you know, I have the resolve that I'm going to do everything I can uh, to make this right for Chloe. I still think the next step is, I think, from the school. This morning we went up there, 
were laid on the table. I would love them to actually adopt this documentary again, you know what, it's out there. The perfect win would be now let us in and see if we can identify where we can change. Maybe let people come in to help change a, a learned behaviour for the better. I still believe there's a possibility that a group session could help Chloe, if the school were to support the process. I've come to see our specialist psychologist, Professor Marilyn Campbell, for advice. As there's no hidden camera evidence, I want to know if showing Chloe's video diaries and family testimony in a group session would work instead. Marilyn, I wanted to show you a video of Chloe. Uh, we've put together what she's going through at school, but she actually got caught out um, by one of the students in the school with the cameras. So there's no undercover cameras uh, footage with this. Um. All the bullying started when I was first arrived at school. They um, now try and trip me down the stairs, trip me up the stairs. She hasn't got the mobility in her hands to catch herself if she falls like we do. And when you hear kids trying to trip her step on the back of her feet, the risk of more permanent injury is high with Chloe. They steal my stuff. They put glue on my locker so I can't get in. And then just last week, a whole different group decided to throw coins at me. She wants to go to school. She wants to be with her friends. We can't just wrap her in cotton wool either. We've got to let her go out there and do it. What do you think of that, Marilyn? Well, I think it's just as powerful even without the undercover cameras um, from her and her family's point of view that, um, yeah, she feels she can't take it anymore. Someone with a physical disability, are they going to have more issues at school with bullying? Unfortunately, yes. Tall kids get like, what's the air like up there? And short kids get called dwarf, different coloured skin. But mainly, kids with disabilities are just so much more different. Um, and other kids pick on them and tease them, but it's not friendly teasing. It's harmful, hurtful teasing. But it's a physical intimidation. Kids trying to trip her over on the stairs. Um, and just how much damage that can do to, to her. I mean, it must be petrifying. For Chloe, it's more about the emotional hurt. It's that non-acceptance. Okay. She's feeling so utterly helpless. Marilyn, at what point should schools become concerned? When a kid's been victimised, mm -hmm. as soon as it happens. Why don't the schools respond quicker? Because they are swamped. They are swamped with all the responsibilities um, of providing education for the children. They can't do everything. And why they sometimes don't respond, perhaps as quickly as we would like them to, is they just don't have the resources. Chloe returned to school after the camera was discovered. Although the bullying at school subsided, we learned that Chloe had now been experiencing cyberbullying. I received all these nasty messages. It broke me. It blocked pretty much everyone on there, but I could still access messages because it was a group chat. I never thought it could get this bad, but it did. Like, my dad got involved, and I didn't think I'd have to get my dad involved with it. Not only did these people hurt me, but they also hurt my family. It's clear Chloe's situation has not been resolved. After several weeks of phone calls and negotiations, school principal Anthony Green has finally agreed to meet us on camera. We're armed with Chloe's video story, which we'd like to show Chloe's classmates in a group session. Hey, welcome. We want them to see what she goes through and ask them for ideas on how to tackle the bullying. Anthony, so there was a point where you didn't want to be involved in, in this process. 
They're not too happy about the hidden cabinets, I assume. My first reaction was, wow, this is not the way I want to go about this. Not sure if I didn't want to be involved. I just didn't like the way we went about it. I didn't like the, the covert nature of it, but I do understand why. In Chloe's case, we actually don't have any covert footage of her in the school, but she has put together a, a video diary, which we're hoping, um, and we intend for it to be used in the same way for people to feel what it's like uh, to be in Chloe's situation. All the bullying started when I was first arrived at school. It got to the point where I cried myself to sleep. So she's got a steel rod in her neck and back, so she can't move her head from side to side. She hasn't got the mobility in her hands to catch herself if she falls like we do. Just part of who she is, she needs to walk on tiptoes, so balance is an issue. And when you hear kids trying to trip her, step on the back of her feet, from our point of view, it it's, shouldn't happen to anyone. But the risk of more permanent injury is high with Chloe. Yeah, I wouldn't like to even think of the damage that it could do to her. They steal my stuff. They put glue, Vicks, and elbow, this elbow grease stuff on my locker so I can't get in. They would have an apple and peg it at my head if I wasn't from upstairs, and then they would do it downstairs as well. And then just last week, a whole different group decided to throw coins at me. Chloe has always been a fighter. You know, you've got to fight for to survive. You have to fight to overcome this operation. You have to fight to be able to walk again. It's an ingrained positive fight that she has needed. Put that in a school environment, she wants to fight for her own independence. She wants to fight to stand up and be heard. She wants to fight to be accepted. I walk on my toes, big whoop to do I received messages, upon messages, from a heap of these people. I was so upset, and it made me, like, die inside. I never thought it could get this bad, but it did, like. It broke me. It made me so depressed. My dad got involved. And that made me feel very insecure of who I was. Because not only did these people hurt me, but they also hurt my family. You know, I think at the end of the day, she's just trying to fight back and just have her time at school like all the other kids. Mm. She wants to go to school. She wants to be with her friends. We can't just wrap her in cotton wool either. We've got to let her go out there and do it. I used to be this smiley young little girl who would do everything and anything for everyone. But I can't do that now with all this happening to me. What are your thoughts, Anthony? Oh, well, you know, it's just incredibly powerful. How does it make you feel when, you, when one of your students is going through something like that? It just eats at you, you know. Um, it, it affects you to the core. You can't turn off the cyberbullying and the messages, just the cruelty and sheer um, pain. It, it literally breaks my heart. Words can't describe the situation. It's unacceptable and we're going to do something about it. And I guess from my perception, I'm really pleased to be representing a whole group of principals who are saying what I'm saying and sitting at the table because collectively, we as schools are really keen to do something about it. And schools that are able to take their communities with them will be the most successful. So I'm going to be at the table. What we know about this school is we have a really committed principal and some great teachers who are prepared to work with us through this process. This is a huge step forward if we can bring together Chloe's classmates for a group session, we stand a real chance of improving her life.
where are we at? We've got this group session that's happening this afternoon. Yeah. How many kids do we have coming along to it? Okay, so yeah, look, we, we've, we've come into a couple of issues in the last 24 hours. We've got some people who are unsure, feeling nervous and potentially not wanting to participate in the program. Because we're talking about bullying, there's a blame culture. Oh, okay. that, that someone's going to be at fault and someone's to blame. What do you think would be best? Is it me just going and having a conversation with some of the kids or with the parents? What, what would work out? I, I think what we'll do, I think we've done the parents and the parents have been supported. So let's spend a few moments now rounding up some of these kids informally, have a really honest, open chat with them and let's see if we can't um, change some of the attitudes and just explain again, this is not about blaming anyone. Of course. While I leave my crew to prepare for the group session, my focus is firmly on trying to make sure it will go ahead. I've just spent the last little bit of time speaking with some of the kids, trying to alleviate some of the concerns that they may have around filming. Um, I think they're a little bit worried that they're going to get in trouble. And I reassured them that is not what we're trying to do here. Like in coming along to the session, it is a positive experience and we want you there because we want to hear your voice. The thing I'm worried about is, is if we don't have enough people. Ideally, we want a large group to be there so that you can actually start to enact change. And if we don't have enough kids there to be able to talk about this, we're not going to see the kind of changes that we'd hope to see in a school that is so supportive. As much as I'd hope for a positive result, things are not going to plan. Half an hour after the session was due to start, only two students have shown up. For Chloe's sake, we need to get to the bottom of what's happening. Where are we at? Okay. Well, there's been some developments in as we've, you know, as we follow the story um, in, in the playground at, uh, at break time. Um, there's been some, some anxiousness from some people and some, some nervousness to, to commit. They have decided, uh, despite us having parental approval and, and talking to them, that they have chosen not to come to our group session today. How many? Well, um, at the moment, we, we are down to two or three people that are, that are out there ready to be committed. Well, that's, yeah, that won't work for Chloe at all, um, and probably wouldn't work for us either. Well, I'm worried about Chloe. If she's asked for her friends to come and support her in this, and looking forward mm. to that, and she's only got two people to support her, that's sending a, a really message. bad yeah. message for well, her, and for her family too. Mm. We've got to pull the pin on today's session. Um, it's not the right thing to do for Chloe. You know, with your support and your willingness to, to help us out with this, we would like to return, if you're still happy to do that. We've got to give this the respect that it deserves. And, you know, um, hasn't gone our way today, doesn't mean that our people or our community aren't totally committed to fixing this. Good. We're all disappointed about the lack of support for Chloe, but I need to let her know I'm not about to walk away from this. How do you feel? about there not being many people that came along today or people not wanting to come along. Made me feel a little bit upset that they don't actually want to see what I've been through and like, let everyone else say, this is, I've been through that too. I don't know how she feels. And... We made a, a, a decision today mm -hmm. um, that we wouldn't go through with the group session. Now, the reason for that was um, that people weren't going to be in the right frame of mind or maybe it wasn't the right day for them to come along. So we've made the decision that we are going to come back mm -hmm. and we're going to put together a larger group so that we can get this right for you. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Yeah, that'd be good. So are you still on board? Yes. Good. OK, glad to hear that. While Marilyn consoles Chloe, her mum Jo arrives, having received the news that only two students turned up in support of her daughter. After such high expectations, 
it's hit Joe pretty hard. Hey, Joe, how are you? Good, how are you? Yeah, well, we've had a day, so, mm -hmm. yeah. We're disappointed for you, like, right now. Like, this isn't what, we, how we expected today to, to pan out. Um, and so we want to, and I feel responsible to get this right for your family. Um, so I've spoken with Anthony about what we can possibly do in the new year, what kind of group we'd be able to put together for this, and you know, saying we want to fix bullying at the school. Not just for Chloe, but for everyone. That it's not all about this one. No, no it's not. not. Yeah. And yeah. it's not just about here. It's, you know, do you remember our conversations, where we've come from? Yeah. Do you remember that day in my office, yes. right? I'm angry, mm -hmm. you're angry, etc. Everyone's upset, you know. Let's let's move forward together, and we can do it, and the, where people are ready for it. Yeah. And I know today didn't go the way we wanted it, but I've been heartened by the parental engagement. I've been heartened by the staff. There's no way in the world I'm going to leave this hanging. I'm not going to leave this young one hanging. Now, Grant will be disappointed, but you know, once we start all over again next year, and yeah. you know, hopefully, fresh start. Yeah, absolutely. But I, I just hope in the meantime she doesn't get any. Yeah, cyberbullying or anything like that. It's the school holidays now. I think over the break, just try and enjoy the time with your friends. Um, try and get as much out of that, have a good break from school. That's what you need to do, and then when we come back at the start of the year, um, we'll work this out. Thank you. We good? Thank you. You're welcome. I want to do something special for Chloe. And after some research, I discovered her biggest passion. Today, Jo has brought her here on the pretense of a family visit to Sydney. She has no idea what's in store. Hello. How are you? Good. Do you know where we are? Sydney. Oh, OK, Sydney. <laughs> well, we're actually in Palm Beach. Or as you probably know it, this is Summer Bay. So we've actually been able to organise a bit of a behind-the-scenes tour of the set. Do you want to go and have a look? Yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome Hello. to Summer Bay. Hey. Nice, nice to meet you. Come on through. Home and Away is Chloe's obsession. Giving her time out from her troubles is a very important part of this process, and I'm glad I can do it for her. When I arrived at the Home and Away set, I got to meet a lot of actors that I love to watch. How's your day going? Yeah, good. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. <laughs> I feel very excited that I actually got my dream. Look, thanks for your time. We've got to head off to somewhere else. Um, we've got another surprise in store. I haven't seen Chloe smile this much since I met her, but there's one of her heroes I particularly want her to meet. Chloe! Hi. How are you, darling? I'm good. Nice to see you. You too. How are things? Great now. I believe Great you've been. <laughs> I believe you've been to the beach. Yeah. And you're from Roma. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. I was born in Roma. It's a funny old world, isn't it? So uh, you've had a few little upsets at school. Yes. Yeah. How are you handling that? Okay. I guess I've got family and friends around. Yeah. Well, that's good. I was a skinny little red-headed fire engine red hair with freckles everywhere. And I used to get, you know, freckle face, ginger megs, ginger bluey, all of those redhead sort of names. What I do know is, you know, you battle your way through it, you stay strong, you stick with the people around you who, you know, give you good support. And as you get older, it does get easier. You keep strong and keep your chin up, won't you? Good on you. Promise me that. Thank you. Good. It made me feel very excited and made my teacher really so comfortable with the smiling I've done. I feel 
feel very lucky. I'm back in Roma to see Chloe and her family. And let's just say, last time I was here, things did not go to plan. It was a stark reminder of how complex the issues around bullying really are. Chloe's been on school holidays and she's back at school. There's still a lot of work that needs to be done to try and help her out. We're due to run a second group session for Chloe in the hope of giving her a trusted network of peers who will support her at school. So Chloe, what's it been like going back to school? It hasn't been as bad as I expected it would be. I think it's been better for me. What's changed? The group that I'm hanging out with. OK. So who are you hanging out with now? Myself. Oh. So you get along well with yourself? Yeah. <laughs> I think we are protecting her. We're only sending her to school for four subjects now. So then when she's not doing those subjects, she's at home. Or work. Um, or work experience. So who's, whose idea was it to do the restricted timetable? Oh, her father and I, yeah, we spoke about it. And, to, and Chloe, yeah, to great lengths. But, yeah, she's better off. She's going to enjoy all that more than what she is at school getting bullied. But it, it must be hard, or, or kind of a shame, um, that because of what's been going on at school, well, she misses out on that, that um, social interaction with kids her own age, but then in saying that, she didn't really have social interaction with the, with the kids because they were bullying her all the time. How does that feel? Lonely. But, yeah, I think it's better off just to go to school and then come home and then do other things and then go back to school and just continue. We have the group session tomorrow afternoon. Um, what are your expectations of it? That everyone will actually show up. That no one will keep bullying anyone. Anyone will, like, every bullying in the school just stop and have a heap of people on my side to support me. How many is a heap? Two or three. Two or three, <laughs> OK. I think we can work with that. Hopefully we can get a few more than that as well. Yeah. So for you, what's, what is the perfect picture of school for Chloe for the next two years? Um, just to have somebody that she can talk to. If she is at school on a break, somebody that will sit with her. Just somebody outside of the family, just to have her back. How are things really feeling for you? Knowing that we're doing this tomorrow, how are you feeling about that? Well, I think it should be good, but we really won't know until tomorrow. But you're still willing to do this. Why is that? Because not every, like everyone shouldn't be picked on for like their hair colour or their, in like their culture or the disability. It should just be, we're all one community. We should just be together and support each other. Is it important for you to have other people understand your story? Yes. Just because I'm going to school doesn't mean I should be able to be picked on or bullied as well as trying to learn. Because I'm trying to have my normal life and go to school and be happy. What if this doesn't go well tomorrow? I haven't really thought about it. I just think positive. The night before the group session. If no one turns up, what are we going to do? Are we just going to stop this whole thing? Are we going to try again until people turn up? It's the only way I have about tomorrow. I just really hope it will go well. After speaking with Jo and Chloe, it's really nice to hear them being so upbeat. She's at school and she's on a reduced timetable. And 
Because of that, she's not having as many negative interactions with kids. She's not having the same kind of bullying as what she was going through when we previously met. But at the same time, she doesn't have the positive interactions. Chloe told me that she's isolated and she's lonely. And I guess, although it seems better for her, I think that she should be able to expect more from school. She's not asking for much. She just wants a mate. She just wants a support network to be around her to be able to lift her when she's down, when she's struggling. So at this group session, that's what we're gonna try and do, is just to make sure that Chloe can get through school that little bit easier. What's the risk for, for Chloe if people don't turn up again? First of all, um, she didn't get the film of the people who were bullying her because she was found out. And then the people that she had asked to support her in the group didn't turn up. If the kids don't turn up today, that's going to be horrendous. It's going to be disastrous. Um, for her own self-esteem. She's already feeling lonely, she's been bullied, she's not allowed to come to school as much as she wants to. Um, she already has a, a physical disability. I mean, how much gets stacked against you? Aware of Chloe's situation, the school has been working tirelessly to ensure today's group session is a success. Principal Anthony Green has been called away urgently. Head of Senior Campus, Kate Vandermullen, has been across Chloe's situation and is by our side. We have the group session coming up. and just wanted to know what your expectations might be from us because you'll be part of the heavy lifting team after we go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, look, well, first up, I guess the main expectation is that we get a positive outcome for Chloe. Um, Chloe obviously wanted to do this project because she felt that maybe she wasn't getting the level of support that she wanted. So both Anthony and myself took on board that it wasn't a success last time. We didn't have the number of kids who wanted to actively participate in the group session. Despite all the setbacks of the past few months, Chloe is in great spirits when she arrives to meet Marilyn and me for the group session. Chloe? Hello. How are you? I'm good. Good to see you. You remember Marilyn, of course. Yes. Hi. Hi. So, uh, Marilyn's going to stay here. Um, I thought we might go out the back while we wait for them to arrive. Yeah. Is that cool? Yes. You feeling good about all of this? Yes. OK. That's a good start. See ya. I'll follow yeah. you. After what happened at the first session, everyone is nervous as we wait to see who, if anyone, will turn up. It's a huge relief when the whole group shows up right on time. You feel relaxed enough? Yes. It's all right. Okay. Right. Well, you stay here mm -hmm. and I'll head in. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I can't go away. Hello, everyone. Hello. How is everyone today? Good. 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 Guys, thank you everyone for coming here today and showing your support. We're going to play a video of what Chloe's been through um, and what her experience is like. When you watch the video, uh, can we have this discussion? Try and be as open as you possibly can be about the way that you feel. There's, there's not a right answer or a wrong answer. So don't be concerned. Chloe has a disability untreated, Chloe would have been lucky to make it to 16. The bullying probably started probably when she was in grade two. Just being teased about a disability. They just pick on her about anything and everything. All the bullying started when I was first arrived at school. They um, would just pick on me from day one. And it got to the point where they would have an apple and peg it at my head from upstairs and then they would do it downstairs as well. 
and nothing would happen. And then just last week, a whole different group decided to throw coins at me. It got to the point where I cried myself to sleep. So she's got a steel rod in her neck and back so she can't move her head from side to side. She hasn't got the mobility in her hands to catch herself if she falls like we do. Try and trip me down the stairs, trip me up the stairs. Oh, you four eyes, you tiptoe and you tiptoe ballerina and I walk on my toes. Big whoops, big whoop to do. And when you hear kids trying to trip her, step on the back of her feet, the risk of permanent injury is high with Chloe. I wouldn't like to even think of the damage that it could do. I received messages, upcoming messages, from a heap of these people, and it made me, like, die inside. I never thought it could get this bad, but it did, like... It broke me. It made me so depressed. My dad got involved. And that made me feel very insecure of who I was because not only did these people hurt me, but they also hurt my family. Chloe has always been a fighter, you know. She wants to go to school, she wants to be with her friends. We can't just wrap her cotton wool either, we've got to let her go out there and do it. I used to be this smiley young little girl who would do everything and anything for everyone. But I can't do that now with all this happening to me. Guys, I'm just going to head out and grab Chloe and come back, OK? So we just watched the video with everyone. Um, they're all a bit emotional from watching it, so I'm sure they're going to be open and receptive to what you have to say. How are you feeling? Nervous but happy at the same time that people turned out. Cool. You ready to go out? Yes. Okay, I'm sure you'll be fine. I'm sure you'll do well. I just wanted to ask the group, was there anything that really shocked you in the video? I didn't expect the messages. Yeah, they're heavy, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, like, I didn't know some of the stuff was happening and I'm actually in Chloe's grade. So it's like, when you don't actually see it, you have no idea. But she was getting more things chucked out of pretty much every day. It's pretty shocking. As a personal friend, it's still shocking to see it. Yeah. To see, like, when we speak to each other, it's, it doesn't seem as real as when you see it on camera. You know what I mean? It has a different sense about it. Yeah, I do know what you mean. It's hard to believe that people could actually do that stuff. Yes, it is. And especially in a small school where you think that you know everybody and that this kind of thing can happen. I find it really surprising that the teachers' jobs within school is not only to teach but keep us safe, but they didn't do that. They sort of ignored that part of their responsibility. How does that make you guys feel? Oh, if I was getting bullied, I wouldn't go to a teacher. I would never go to a teacher. Why is that? Because I find that they just make it worse and they're just like, yeah, we'll look into it. It's not like a serious thing, like where if you failed a class, that's an important thing. You would think they'd be on it straight away. It's a big issue, but it's not big enough. Exactly. It's a huge issue, but it's not being recognised as yeah. a huge issue. I know we've, we've spoken about Chloe being bullied. Does anyone else have an experience with, with bullying? Yeah, I have an experience. The teachers didn't believe that this student, who appeared to be so nice to everyone, could be capable of doing that to someone else. Ultimately, I had to change schools. So, in a way, I'm very similar to Chloe's experience. 
um, where she felt like she wasn't getting heard. What do you guys think um, when, I guess, Chloe's been through so much that she had to resort to taking a hidden camera to school? At first, I was kind of like, that's a bit extreme, but then after watching that video and no one believing Chloe's story, you think, yeah, what else would you do? Chloe, all of the people who have come here to support you today, what do you think of that? I'm very thankful that there's actually people that are willing to help me get all this bullying to stop. What can students do to make sure that Chloe's next two years at school are not going to be like she's had before? If you hear someone talking about Chloe or anyone else, then tell them to stop when it's not on to be talking about someone. Maybe even like let her know that she can come to us, we're always going to be here, but like, we're not going to push her away, she can always talk to us. Um, I think just maybe sending a message to Chloe or someone you think might be having trouble, just to check up and see if they're alright. Anything you want to say, Chloe? Just want to say thank you for everyone who has come to show their support. Yeah, you're going to get so many text messages tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> or tonight. Look, thank you very much for spending the time here today. I know Chloe and her family also appreciate it a lot. And hopefully you guys can help start to make some of the changes that's going to make school for not only Chloe, but for everyone else an even better place. Is everyone else smiling? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> smiling <What's>... at us. <laughs> Hey, how was that for you watching it? One, I was very proud, proud of the students, um, Chloe included, and how they participated in that session. Sometimes when the students were speaking, they were somewhat critical of teachers, and that's really hard to hear when you know that you're such a caring teacher and that you're trying your very best to accommodate all of the students. Yeah, I, I was a bit surprised about that. As staff, as teachers, we're human. Um, we do obviously feel emotion as well, but it's really important that I have heard how they're feeling. And it's very much a, a you know, a culture that we want within the school, yeah. that the students feel comfortable to come and see us about things, yeah. Today, when Joe arrives, I'm happy to see it's quite a different story. Hey, lovely. Hey, baby. Hi, Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Doing well. How'd you go? Do you want to tell Mum how it went? Really good. Really good? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the, the group I think was great at trying to come up with some solutions not only for the school, um, but also some things that they want to do for Chloe. So whether it be sending a text message of support, letting Chloe know that, you know, she can come to them um, mm -hmm. if something wrong happens. Like just some really simple practical things. Mm -hmm. Are you happy with how all of it's gone now? Yes, very happy. Good. Glad we could help out. You did a great job too. The kids were great. When they saw Chloe's story, when mm -hmm. they saw the video, it was all put together like that. The kids wanted to show some support. Excellent. That's really good. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. I'll give you a hug as well. Thanks. What's the plan this afternoon? Head home and watch Home and Away. Oh. Because okay. I missed out on it last night. What's going on at Home and Away at the moment? Um, a bushfire and everyone else, everyone had to run to the fire safe zone. Okay. Well, that would have been hard. <laughs> yeah. And then there's, I think it's the murderer is back out from, like, ran away from jail. Okay. and went to kill the guy that she was after again. Who did the murderer kill? Justin. OK. Do you watch him anyway? No. Oh. <laughs> Making this series, I've met two extremely brave young people who've helped shine a light on the very complex issue of bullying. 
Kelsey's a much happier kid. He now feels he has the support of his friends and peers. Rick, Kelsey's dad, doesn't feel as though he has to pack up the family and leave town. But Rick felt he couldn't resolve his differences with the school, so Kelsey is doing distance education. Chloe's still at school, her situation is much better and she feels heartened by the support that she's received as a result of being part of this process. Kelsey and Chloe both hope that by sharing their stories, other kids won't feel so alone and will ask for help if they're in a similar situation. Our hope is that we've created an opportunity for young people to talk about how we can work together to change things for the better. Both schools continue to work with their students on initiatives to reduce bullying. But schools can't do this alone. We need to tackle this as a community. As much as I'd like to, it's just not possible for me to personally be there for everyone who's suffering from bullying. But I am committed to help make a change. If we stand together, we can reduce bullying and make the school experience a happier one for everyone. So I checked the mail today and I received a little um, thing. And on the back of it, it says, Dear Chloe, everything is going well from one of the girls in the meeting, in the group session. So I'm going to inbox her today and just say thank you and just see what happens from there. For more information and support on issues raised in this program, contact the following services or go to abc.net.au forward slash bullying. Lifeline 13 11 14, Kids Helpline 1800 55 1800, reachout.com.